Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. You probably know that most of my videos on Lightroom are done using a very specific version of Lightroom, Lightroom Classic. You also probably know that there are other versions of Lightroom available. For example, there is a mobile version of Lightroom and there is another version of Lightroom that's simply called Lightroom. You're looking at it right now. Now internally, Adobe refers to this version of Lightroom as the desktop version of Lightroom. Most of us, though, refer to this version of Lightroom as the cloud version of Lightroom. And the reason why we call it that is because your image and your image edits are stored in the cloud, unlike Lightroom Classic, where your images are stored locally. Now, there are some advantages to having your images stored in the cloud. For example, I could be working on an image on my iMac and not finish my edit for whatever reason and close down my iMac. And then a couple days later, I'm on my MacBook Pro well, I could open Lightroom for the cloud on my MacBook Pro and take up that edit right where I left off. And I'm able to do that because that image and the edits for that images, image is stored in the cloud. Now, there are some disadvantages as well. First of all, having your images stored in the cloud means you have to wait for your image to upload to the cloud and your edits to upload. And then when you're on a different computer, you have to make sure everything downloads to that new computer before you could start working on it. Um, so you'll need an active internet connection, and so not everyone has a very fast or robust internet connection, so that could be a disadvantage. Also, you have to pay for that cloud space. Now, of course, with your Adobe subscription, you do have some cloud space, but if you have a large Lightroom library, you're going to use that up, and you'll need to pay for more. So there are some disadvantages to having your images in the cloud as well. Now, with Lightroom Classic, all your images are stored locally, and they're you know, that's an advantage, but there is some disadvantages there as well. For example, if I'm working on the image on my iMac and it's stored locally, I can't go to my MacBook and start working on it over there because the image is local on my iMac. So there is that disadvantage there. Also with Lightroom Classic, you have to go through a formal import process. So you have to import the image into Lightroom Classic. Lightroom creates previews for the image. It stores those previews in the catalog, and then it puts the image on your computer where it Ever you tell it to put it. And so it's kind of a process. So a lot of people like are using Lightroom Classic, but the, they prefer that you didn't have that catalog system. Well, a few months ago, Adobe made some changes to the so-called cloud version of Lightroom that's making many of us rethink whether or not we want to use Lightroom Classic. Specifically, you now could have your images stored locally with Lightroom. So you don't have to worry about syncing them with the cloud. You could work on them locally. And another advantage is you don't have to go through a formal import process. You probably know a lot of other applications you don't have to import images. For example, on One Photo Raw or Luminar Neo, you could just navigate to where they are in your system and start working on them. Well, you could do that with the cloud version of Lightroom now. For example, I have this uh, cloud version of Lightroom open, and you'll notice I'm in the cloud tab, and this is the way it used to be. So we have images here that are in the cloud. I could go up to file and I could import more images and they'd get imported into Lightroom and then they'd get synced with the cloud. Now there's another tab called local. Click on that local tab and it will bring you to your synced pictures folder. I don't have any images there but you could browse to where images are on your system and just start working on them. For example, I'll click on browse and you can see I have my local hard drive and then I have a number of hard drives that are plugged into my computer. I have a hard drive called photos. I'll just roll that open. I have a folder in there called my photos. I'll roll that open. And I have a folder called Glen Falls. I'll roll that open. And there I have some photos. I'll go to grid view and you can see they're all showing up immediately. I didn't import these. I just navigated to where they are on my computer. And if I want to work on one, let's say I just want to work on this one, right? I could go over to the edit tab on the right hand side and start working on it. And I'm going to do a quick edit on this because I want to show you uh, how you can sync this with the cloud. So if I do some work on this image on my iMac, I can take up the edit on my MacBook Pro or on my iPad or my iPhone as well with the mobiles, mobile versions of Lightroom. Now, I'll do a quick edit. Now you can see this is uh, underexposed. Now, if you watch any of my videos, you know I have a specific uh, way I edit an underexposed image. Specifically, I jump right to highlights and I take those all the way down and I go to shadows all the way up. 
Then I go to exposure and I just move that up till it looks like it was exposed properly. And that's the easiest way I know to edit an underexposed in Im image, or at least to begin your edit with an underexposed image. Now I'm going to get a white point. I'm going to hold the option key on my Mac. It's the alt key on the PC and move this slider to the right. You see, I got a black screen. Start to bleed through. I'm starting to um, clip those channels. I'll just back it off till all that color dissipates right there. I'm going to do the same thing for blacks. I get a bright screen this time. I'm starting to crush the shadows in that dark area that's coming through, but I don't mind crushing the shadows a little bit. So we're going to do that. We're going to go to color and I'm just going to add some saturation and then we'll go to effects and I want to add some clarity and some texture. And I think I'll just add a darker vignette, just kind of there. And I think it's still a little dark. So I'm just going to brighten it up just a little more. And I'm just going to double check my white point because I brightened it up a little bit. All right, let's just say this is my edit. Now you probably noticed that right here it says copy one photo to the cloud. Let me go back to grid view for a minute. I don't have to be in grid view. I could do it from the film strip at the bottom, but I'll go to grid view. And let's just say I want to select more. I, could, I can. I could hold the command key on my Mac. It's control key on a PC. And let's say I want to sync all of these to the cloud. I'll just select them all and click copy five photos to the cloud. Now, I'm not going to copy all five just for the sake of speed. We're just going to copy this one that I edited. So we're going to copy that one to the cloud. All right. It comes up with this photo and all of its edits will be copied to the cloud. You could find it in the cloud tab under recently added. So I'll show you that in a moment. We'll click OK. And I could click don't show that again if I want to. All right. It says one photo added to the cloud. Now we'll go over to that cloud tab and we go to recently added and we go just now and there's that image and there's our edits. The thing you need to be aware of is we now actually have two versions or two copies of this photo. So if I edit one, those edits won't be copied to the other. For example, specifically if I'm editing the cloud image right now, and this is the cloud version of that image. And let's just say I edited it, all right, just uh, obvious edit. If I go over to local tab, you'll notice that the local image doesn't reflect those edits. So be aware of that. If you do sync your images from your local folders to the cloud, when they're in the cloud and you do work on them in the cloud, those edits won't get back to your local folder. So that maybe is something they should consider fixing or changing or having at least the option for you to allow those edits to get applied to the local image because obviously they did not. Uh, so I'll go back there and there's our image here. You can see that. Oops, I, I moved something. I don't know what I did. It reset the whole image. I'm not really sure what happened there. Isn't that odd? Let's go back to local. I didn't reset that, see? Hmm, very interesting. I wonder if that's a bug. See? Oh, no. See how it reset the image? Did I hit? You know what I might have hit? Showing original. There we go. I must have hit something inadvertently. Like I hit uh, before, after, somehow, without knowing it with my mouse. So, the point is that your edits will not transfer from the cloud to the local image. So, be aware of that. So that's pretty cool in my view um, because no one likes going through that whole formal import process if you don't have to. You could just edit them locally, go to your local tab, go to browse, find your image. And then if you're, you know, when you're done editing, you could export this like you would any other time. You could bring up your export dialog and just export this one photo as you normally would. You could resize it. You could export it as a JPEG TIFF. JXL, AVIF, DNG. You could use the original. And then if you have original plus settings, what will happen is it will have the original, in this case, it was an icon raw file, and it will have a sidecar file with it, the .xmp file, and the .xmp file will have all the edits in it. And those edits will be um, able to be read by other Adobe products like Photoshop or Lightroom Classic or whatever. So I could export this let's say, as that original and settings, and then import that image into Lightroom Classic, and Lightroom Classic will see all the edits, and I'll be able to take off, take up 
editing this image from where I left off in Lightroom Classic if I wanted to do that. So you're aware of that. So this is that new local tab that's in Lightroom. Let me know in the comments if you want me to do more videos on this version of Lightroom as opposed to Lightroom Classic where I do most of my videos. Thank you everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.